Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Say, David, listen, you think we ought to call that babysitter? Mm, What for? Honestly, sometimes you ask almost as silly questions as I do. What for? It's 7 o'clock and she's not here yet. That's what for. Oh, she'll be here. How do you know? Because we arranged for her to be here. It's 7 o'clock. It's now 7 o'clock. She's not here yet. Well, you finish getting dressed. Then we'll worry about the babysitter. <sighs> Going out certainly gets to be a business. Well, I'm perfectly willing to stay at home. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Nothing doing. Bertha even offered to, but it's her day out and I wouldn't have it. Mm, don't blame you. I'd rather have a babysitter, wouldn't you? I don't know. Would I? Yep, you would. Bertha and Fritz have their own lives to lead. We can't let ours interfere, David. My one and only principle. Well, I hate to admit it, but you're right. Besides, Mrs. Warren says this babysitter's excellent. Well, how excellent do you have to be to be a babysitter? Well, pretty excellent for my baby. You're conceited. And yours. Oh. Hey, what are you looking for, David? Have you been in my bureau drawers again? Just neatening things up. I wish you'd stay out of them. I'm only trying to be helpful. Every time you neaten things up, I... Can't find anything. Yeah, you'll get used to where I put things, and then you'll be much happier that way. I was perfectly happy the way things were. <gasps> That's the trouble with men. They never oh, like my... any change. What are you looking for? My cufflink box. Cufflink box, cufflink box. Cufflink me... box. It's with the shoelaces, What's darling. What's doing with the shoelaces? Well, they're all in a little box, too, so I thought I'd put all the little boxes. Cufflink box and the shoelace box and the collar button box. Mm-hmm. Box for pins, tie clasps, and all those. I'd put them together in one big box. One big box. Why? So you won't have so many little boxes around, though. I see. I can see there's no point in arguing. None. Well, tell me, just where did you put this overall box? That's a good name for it, overall mm-hmm. box. I'll remember. Mm-hmm. It's in the top drawer behind your socks. With my overalls, I suppose. Yes. I suppose there's a reason for that, too. Of course. It keeps the socks in place. Oh, no, I see. That's... Grand, that's good. David, you know, I don't think you appreciate my being neat. Well, frankly, I hate it. Well, that's appreciation. It's the kind of appreciation makes a woman do her best work, pushes her on to bigger and better things. I was always under the impression that I was very neat about my bureau drawers. Ah, well, you're neat enough, but you don't have time to devote to a system like me. System. Now, look at that. What do you think of that? Don't you like it better? Mm. All those little boxes in a nice big box. Neat as a pin. David, what are you doing? I'm taking the little boxes out of the big box. Why, for heaven's sake? Because sakes. they're so tightly packed that they don't open. After I spend hours, you dog. Oh, go on, comb your hair. I'm combing it. Get your nose out of my bureau drawers, or I'll, I'll cut it off in spite, in spite your face. No, the one thing I can't afford to have cut off is my nose. Are you going to be all dressed when the babysitter comes? Of course I am. She's late. Certainly a good thing we don't have to be at dinner, the dinner party until eight. Mm. Well, I don't think she can be much of a babysitter. She's not very prompt anyway. Here, hold this cuff, will you? Let me try to get that thing All back. All right. Well, Go you're on. never prompt. I'll push it from the other side. Wait, you I consider can't... yourself a babysitter, don't you? Okay. Yeah, that's all right. Anyway, it's different with me. I'm the baby's mother. Oh, now, David, you are certainly looking handsome. We ought to step out more often. Yeah, more often than I'd be a nervous wreck. <laughs> Here, get the other one now. All right. The last yeah. thing you said to me this morning as I stepped on the train now, was... push! Come home earlier, we'll be late for dinner. The first thing you said tonight was, we'll be late for dinner. Well, you don't want to be late and make me make a bad impression, do you? If we're ever late because of me, darling, I'll be the first to admit it. They wouldn't believe it if you did. They'd automatically suspect me. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine why. Neither can I. David, it's five minutes after seven. If she isn't here in five more minutes, I'm going to telephone her. She'll be here. I suppose you're psychic with her. Yes, I am. I suppose in your mind's eye, you're picturing her coming down River Road on her bicycle. Mm Mm-hmm, it does. Mm, I suppose you can tell me exactly what she looks like. I'm not interested in other women. 
On bicycles. Oh, sweet. Well, Mrs. Warren says she's an excellent babysitter. You don't have to keep saying that. Well, I know how you worry about Bobby, even though I know you don't like even me to know it. Uh, this babysitter takes care of Mrs. Warren's grandson. What do you think of that? She does? Yeah, grandmothers are a lot fussier about grandchildren than they are about children. I wonder why. Oh, get dressed. I'm getting dressed. I'm all dressed. You don't look it. So... This babysitter's good enough for Mrs. Warren's grandson's good enough for you. Doesn't this me. babysitter have a name? Of course she has a name. Then why don't you call her by it? Well, how would you know who I was talking about if I was talking about Harriet? You know anybody called Harriet? No, can't say as I do. If I were talking about Harriet, you wouldn't have any idea who I was talking about. Is Harriet the babysitter's name? No. No. Uh, you are really frolicsome tonight, Mrs. Norton. Of course, because I am stepping out with my man. How do I look, my man? Oh, not bad. Oh, that makes me feel very glamorous. Not bad. Wash my hair. Looks clean. Well, I think I'm going to have you take a course in beauty culture so you'll appreciate me a little more. Oh, I appreciate you all right. Mm, never know it. Well, I married you. Well, that was nice of you. I think so. Mm. Especially since I've been rushed ever since. Listen, you rushed me before I rushed you, remember? Now it's your turn. You almost dressed? And just a few finishing touches. I think you look nicer without the finishing touches. Mm. You see how freely I give compliments? Well, things given freely have less value. I True with out. compliments. Why isn't that girl here? Yeah, she'll be here. Just the one time I'm ready on time, the babysitter's late. She's that's not very right, late. That's all. David, listen, it worries me. Maybe she's forgotten. Now, why on earth would she have forgotten? If she's going to be paid, she will forget. Well, she might have. I would if, if I were she. Well, you is not she. Oh, I wish I was. You wish you were. If I was she, I'd... If you were she. I wouldn't mind leaving the baby with her so much. Because then you'd know who she is, seeing as she is you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. right. Well, stop worrying. She is not you. Thank goodness if she'd be married to you, not me. Oh, let's not go around that again. Why don't you just call her up? All right. What if she isn't there? Then you'll know she's on her way over here. Now I know why I married you. You're so bright. Mm -hmm. Well, you need me. Now go on, call her up. She's gone. We'll be wasting a nickel. But if you insist, I'll... Operator? Hello, will you give me Eastbrook 718, ring 2? I know her number by heart, David. Mm, extraordinary. It's ringing. What time is it now? It's still early. It's not as early as it was, but it's not as late as it's going to be, I suppose. Think we'll have fun tonight? Probably not, but remember, this was your idea, not mine. Hmm? I didn't want to go, and I still don't. You got us into it. I'm not a bit sorry. You can't sit around this house with me alone every night. Hmm. Why not? Well, figure it out for yourself. I'd hate to try it, too. Listen, you know, it took me hours pressing this dress this afternoon. There are yards imagine. in this skirt. Yes, yards. yards. Oh, we're certainly lucky we got the babysitter tonight. She's booked every other night this week. Well, every other night. Does she answer? Not yet. I wonder what we'd have done if we couldn't have gotten her tonight. Now, what's the use of worrying about it now? No use, no use. Listen, Dave, now I'm really worrying. There's no answer. This button on my coat's loose. Oh, so tomorrow... That means she's on her way over here, I guess. How do you know? Well, where else would she be if she's due here? Well, that is why I'm worrying. Well, put the phone down. Holding it off the hook won't bring her here any faster. Why does something like this always have to happen? And nothing has happened. How can you say that? Here we are all dressed up, ready to go, and she's not here. Now, you want to go downstairs? I suppose so. Doesn't make much difference. Stop frowning so. I hate having rushed you so, David. Now you have to stand around and wait. No, oh, it's, it's not your fault. David, do you realize this is practically the first time since we're married you said something wasn't my fault? That's because it's practically the first time since we were married that something isn't your fault. Uh oh. I should have let it go by without comment. Don't break your neck on the stairs. Try not to. What time is it now, darling? Take it easy. Come on in the living room. I'll smoke my pipe and you stop worrying. David, it's at least a half hour's drive. We have to be there at eight. I wish I could remember to put the matches in the suit that I am wearing instead of the suit that I took off. If we left right away, we would be there at quarter of eight, and that's early. I know. It'll take me at least 15 minutes to show the babysitter around before we leave. I have half a mind... Now, go on. Don't stop there. I have half a mind to call up Mrs. Warren and give her a piece of my mind. What has Mrs. Warren got to do with anything? The babysitter takes care of her grandson. Don't you remember half the things I tell you? No, you don't. No, I do my best, though. Well, it's obviously not good enough. 
Perhaps I'll just call her up and ask her if this girl's usually late. No, that'll be a great help. Go, go ahead. I will, I will. Hello? Hello, operator. Give me Eastbrook 417, ring one. You know that number by heart, too? Mmm, I have a big heart. Oh, hello, Mrs. Warren. This is Mrs. Norton. Mrs. Warren, I'm, I'm calling up about the babysitter you recommended to me. I... She's what? She's at your grandson's. Oh, Mrs. Warren, she can't be. She... David, what do you think of that? She made arrangements for two dates in one night. This is terrible. Hello, Miss Warren. I'm sorry. I was just talking to my husband. See, we're supposed to go out tonight and... Oh, this is the night she always goes to your daughter's. Well, she's there on the wrong night, that's all. What? Are you sure, Mrs. Warren? Oh, no. Well, thank you for telling me. Goodbye. Well, what's the matter? You look as if you're going to faint. I think I am going to faint. Well, before you faint, would you tell me what you found out? David, I'm going crazy. I'm going right straight out of my mind. I've been going around all day thinking today was Tuesday. Tuesday. What on earth does that have to do with anything? It felt just like Tuesday. I just can't believe it isn't Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Just what does Tuesday feel like? The way today felt like. Oh. Listen, are you sure it's Monday? Yes, it's Monday. I'm positive it's Monday. Cross my heart and hope to die. It's been Monday all day Don't long. Don't talk like that. David, darling, you're going to kill me. I'm going to do what? I say you're going to kill me. I am? You're going to take me right over your knee and you're going to whale the living daylights out of me? I'm going to whale the living daylights out of you. That's what I said. Why? Because it's Monday and our appointment to go out was for Tuesday. Oh, David, please. Please what? Please stop wiggling your nostrils and take me over your knee and end the agony. Claudia, come over here. broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. There's a comforting assurance about old friends, old books, old tunes, a kind of tried and true quality we all value. There's that same assurance of quality about Coca-Cola. Through the years, well over 60 by now, that quality has never varied. Coke is always delicious, Always refreshing. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember... Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. Everywhere.